I'm Sam Turner with the House of Greenwood. I'm sitting with Jolanda Jo Jones, City Council Member at Large. Ms. Jones, thank you so much for taking your time out of your busy schedule and sitting with us today. Reading through your bio and going through some of the things that I've, that I've seen online, um, you have a very tragic childhood. Can you kind of explain how you don't use that as a crutch? Well, I guess it is tragic, but everyone who grew up like me grew mm -hmm. up the same way. I just chose to use that as serious motivation uh, to live life differently as a grown-up. I mean, very simplistic terms. I didn't want to end up where most of the people in my family or a lot of people in my family ended up. So and I guess you could use it as an excuse or crutch if you want to, but if you live 70 or 80 years, that's a long time to live a tragic life. And so I chose to use it as a motivator instead of a crutch. There seems to be a racial divide. And predominantly, you've been in the news with the Houston Fire Department. Can you speak upon that? Well, yeah. There have been a number of issues with the fire department, and mm -hmm. I'm not saying every firefighter is a bad firefighter, but there are some that have issues, mm -hmm. uh, specifically issues with race and issues with sex. There have been a number of occasions where they found nooses um, at the fire department. In fact, they found a noose in the locker of a captain, which is the highest ranking officer in a fire department. It's very unnerving to me. I mean, and if you happen to be a black person who works in that station, you got to wonder about a captain who keeps a noose in his locker. I was one of the first and only city council members to speak out against that because right is right and wrong is wrong. Mm -hmm. And since I've spoken about it, I specifically requested an investigation by either the Justice Department or the EEOC into allegations of sexism in the fire department. And so they or the I should say the union president has issues with me. And he just seems to want to distract people from the real issues uh, with certain members of the fire department, which are specifically discrimination based on race and sex and retaliation based on race and sex. And they need a distraction. And I guess tag I'm it. Mm -hmm. So that still doesn't take me off the focus. I'm still distracted on rooting out discrimination based on race and sex and retaliation based on race and sex. And they can keep you know, throwing stuff at me as much as they want. And in the scheme of things, you talked about my tragic life. Um, the allegations are more like an annoyance, sort of like a gnat as opposed to some nuclear weapon. Because when you've overcome the obstacles that I've overcome in my life, I'm going to compare mm -hmm. making up lies against me and being raped by my uncle. Making up lies, mm -hmm. getting raped, making up lies, getting raped when I'm eight. The getting raped is a lot more difficult to get over than the lies. So I, I guess it's meant to distract me, but it won't. We also had a very brutal beating that was in the news recently. A very young child, 15 years old, Chad Holly. What is your position on that? And how do you feel about HPD's brutal beating behind? this young man? Certainly, what happened to Chad Holly is, is unacceptable. And, you know, people, again, are trying to distract from that. Right. You know, and it's not just Chad. It happens a lot in a lot of places. I get complaints all the time about it. I got complaints before the Chad Holly video, and I've gotten complaints after the Chad Holly video, I think. The Chad Holly video, perhaps, is what Houston needed to make us pay attention to it. Again, there are people out there, believe it or not, or law enforcement out there, that think that it was justified and it wasn't. And hopefully we can use the Chad Holly video as a catalyst to show people what's appropriate and what's inappropriate and stop getting away from, well, he was accused of this, he was accused of that. You know, there are laws in place to deal with what they believe he did, and, and those laws don't. 
uh, include kicking him in the head. And, and I think the most egregious thing done in that tape was hitting him with a car. Mm. And but for him jumping over the car, he could really easily be dead. And people seem to just be looking at that cause, mm. because the car can do much more damage to you than getting kicked in the head. So uh, certainly it was wrong. And we need to use that as a motivator to fix the system. But I believe that it's going to be a challenge to fix the system so long as we make excuses for why it was okay or he did this or he did that. But just because it's hard, it's hard doesn't mean that we shouldn't look into it. And I will continue to look into it with people who have like minds mm -hmm. who want to root those kinds of things out because one of the reasons this country was founded was to make sure the government couldn't just oppress you like they did in England. And if the government can just oppress you, that's really scary. You seem like you're a very tenacious, strong woman. Um, how will that uh, translate over into the budget cuts? Uh, will you speak for the people? Wow, do you watch me? Uh, my job is to speak for the people. Mm -hmm. My job, in my opinion, is to make sure that every voice is heard. I'm very proud uh, to have had the Chronicle say that I bring a voice to council that's ordinarily left out. It's really easy to not pay attention to poor people because poor people are too busy surviving. They're too busy working a bunch of jobs to try to pay their bills, make ends meet. Uh, they don't have flexibility in their jobs, so they can't come down in the middle of the day to public session on a weekday and tell us what their issues are. And so people take their inability to come down here as a sign that they don't care or we shouldn't pay attention to them. And then you have a whole faction of people who know, not who think, but who know that government doesn't work for them. So they've lost faith in the system, but just because they've lost faith in the system does not mean the system should forget about them. And uh, I've often wondered why I had such a tragic life. And when I was younger, I did used to be sort of like the woe is me. How can so many bad things happen to one person? Mm -hmm. You know, my dad kills himself. I'm with him when he kills himself. Two of my uncles kill themselves. My brother's murdered. Uh, my aunt is murdered. I have another cousin murdered. I have, well, another cousin murdered and another cousin murdered. And we got evicted. And how does all this stuff work? And um, God, you must not love me. And and then as I got older, I said, you know, God was actually preparing me for this job here on city council. That, in my mind, is the only explanation for why I had such tragic things happen to me to sort of build up my character, to build up the calluses so that when they hit me with this or they try to distract me with that, it's really not a distraction because I've had to live through much more serious things. So in this budget a deficit, I will be advocating uh, to make sure that everyone has skin in the game. In other words, if we've got to furlough people, why are we just furloughing 5,300 of our employees? Why aren't we furloughing all 23,000? Mm. So why, in other words, why should only 5,300 bear the burden of the entire city? And um, from my perspective and from the paperwork that's been given to me, the people that are taking the biggest hit are the people who make the least amount of money. That makes no sense to me. And they're struggling, living day to day. And I just don't think that there's an awareness that, I mean, unless you've been poor, unless you've had to pick what necessity you're going to need the most. For example, in my family, it was not unusual. In the, if my mom got paid, she didn't have enough to pay all of her bills. So the question becomes, okay, well, what bill are we gonna? What bills are we gonna pay? Which bills are we not gonna pay? Which ones can we do without? Well, if it's in the winter, we're gonna try to keep the gas on, right? Because we need heat. Or if it's in the summer, we're gonna try to keep the air on because we need, you know, air condition. And so you have to pick between needs and wants, and you and it's very easy to determine what's a need and what's a want. And I don't think we have a good uh, appreciation for what's a need and what's a want. For example, we have constituents who get extra trash service. Said, whoa, and the city actually pays extra for it. To those people, they believe that's a need. Well, 
I would respectfully submit to you to get extra trash service is not a need. I would respectfully submit to you if we have kids who don't have food to eat in the mornings and we have a breakfast program or we have an after school program that in many instances will give these children the only food they have for the day, that is a need compared to paying for extra trash service. So I think my job on council is to, uh, in some cases, remind people because I don't think that everyone on council grew up rich. But I think another job of mine is to educate uh, some of my colleagues who have no clue <laughs> that some people don't have their lights turned on. And i.e. they're not like neglectful parents, they just don't make enough money. Or I have to remind some colleagues that kids, it's not kids' fault that they're born into poverty. So even if you want to be mad at the mom and punish the mom, if you think the mom shouldn't have had as many kids or the mom should have gotten more education. So we're going to penalize the kids, really? We're going to let them do without, really, because you're mad at the mom? So I think that that's probably one of the most important jobs I have on council is to just try to break it down in simplistic terms uh, how the decisions that we make on council affect people in their everyday life. Mm -hmm. And it, we can either profoundly affect them positively or we can profoundly affect them negatively. And I hope to stop us from profoundly affecting people negatively, but it is a struggle every day because we have people who just have no clue that poor people even exist, or mm -hmm. if they do exist, then it's somehow their fault. Um, even though the school system is failing poor people, you know, even though the city is failing poor people, mm -hmm. the city puts infrastructure into affluent neighborhoods and then they don't put infrastructure into poor neighborhoods, and the city puts wide sidewalks in nicer areas and then you go to poor areas and they don't even have sidewalks. The kids are walking in the street to get to school, which is clearly dangerous. So, or we have drainage in better neighborhoods and then we have some poor neighborhoods like in South Park where there is no drainage. The drainage is your front yard, the drainage is your house. So you just have to hunker down until the water subsides. And you hope it doesn't destroy your property. But there are people in the city who have no, elected officials that have no clue. Quite frankly, I've got to laugh because if I didn't laugh, it would make me cry. You know, that people just don't care. Or, I mean, an easy way to justify doing really bad things to people is to somehow try to blame those people for the bad things that we do. And we do that a lot. So I, I just think that I'm meant to be that person on council it says, whoa, hold mm -hmm. up. Have you thought about this angle or have you thought about that angle and make them have to make a conscientious decision to do bad stuff to people as opposed to how council works. Uh, before I got here where no one really says anything about anything, so if we do bad stuff to people, people can come back later and say, well, I didn't know. No one told me. Mm -hmm. And now when I say stuff, Sometimes they're put in a position where they'll look like they really are uncaring. And, uh, but, you know, I have to deal with people, if you watch council, that get up and walk out when I speak. I mean, and I just sort of laugh and I think, wow, we're elected by the people to handle the people's business. And I think it is um, the mature thing to do, mm -hmm. to sit and listen to everyone, whether you agree with them or not, which I do. I listen to people I agree with. I listen to people that I don't agree with, and I try to work with them as opposed to, I'm not going to listen, I'm not going to listen, and then run out. I, to me, that's really um, not a mature thing to do. And as a competitor, one, I'm a former world-class athlete. As a, as a lawyer, too, because I have to intellectually joust in court, and as a person who grew up in a poor neighborhood, it is really important, in my opinion, to keep your enemies closer than you keep your friends and to scrutinize what your enemies say more than you scrutinize what your friends say because your enemies are trying to undo you.